I really, I thank Dina Filipina for honor, to give me this honor to be with you and to speak about our situation in Iraq and our women, how they live during these days. First, I would like to mention that eight years passed where our country is being turned into a yard of battle against terrorism. And this is, it's really, it has really a great cost on the life of our people and on the unsafe life till now is going on. Here, I would like to mention that in this situation where still remains, there is no stability in the country, still the political and the human rights remains, you know, <coughs> fragile. And, you know, armed, for, uh, armed for violence and silence of human rights violations continue to affect large sectors of the population. Armed violence continue to impact negatively on, on civilian infrastructure. Such violence not only leads to arbitrary loss of life and injury, but also limit access to other basic rights including the right to access basic humanitarian services and the right to assembly, the right of assembly, the freedom of expression, and freedom of religion. It's a lot of ten and thousands of people being, you know, the casualty of this situation now. Just to remind you, to give you an idea, just last year, over 3,000 of our people being killed, and many others will be injured. Many of them, they are also women and children. On this situation, also widespread poverty, economic stagnation, lack of opportunities, environmental degradation, and an absence of basic service constitute silence in human rights violation that, large, that affect large sectors of the population. Though within the improvement of security in our country during the last two years, but we are, still we have seen in the last, we have seen the effects and accumulations of the past three decades during the dictatorship regime still cast there shadows on the situation of Iraqi women who suffer serious violations of their rights in different aspects and places and categories as detainees in the prisons and jails and displaced and migrants, homeless with estimated numbers of widows and orphans and those with special needs approximately 4 million. Most of whom suffer from poverty, misery, and misery, unemployment, and lack of social protection, all taking place in light of terrible deteriorating in basic public service to citizens, housing, <coughs> electricity, water, food, education, and health care. Adding to that, some conflict situation and circumstances may have caused women to be part of the violence and a victim at the same time where we witness a phenomena of suicide bombers, bombers, a model due to overlap of several causes such brainwashing and the loss of family and extreme poverty, illiteracy and hopelessness and anger. Disabling existing, existing laws and mechanisms of its rule and control leads to impunity from consequences and the spread of ignorance and backwardness are all factors that encourage the criminal practices of terrorism and violence against women. Kidnapping, murder, rape, and physical and psychological <coughs> violence endless threat to impose a certain outfit and style of dressing by any militia backed by a backed group or these women are abused because they are from ethnic minorities or other religious groups as well as the trafficking and exploitation of women to practice prostitution in addition to passing rule, rules of 
tribal customs and traditions contrary to human rights order. Manipulating religion in the same in the name of Islam using contradicting local clerics order fatwa, such as legitimizing the so-called honor crimes, forced marriages, and merit and merit curves outside the framework of the law, and encourage polygamy and temporary marriages. A large <coughs> proportion of women and girls suffer from domestic violence which often leads to a threat to their lives and devastating effect on their health, physical and psychological. But also at the same time, I would like to mention, it's also I, I am with the pride to our distinguished experience to mention or to, to point out our distinguished experience working actively and relentlessly throughout difficult and challenging times and environment marked by escalating terrorist attacks and sectarian conflict and insecurity to participate actively in the elections and referendum on the Constitution. Implementing, <coughs> implementing a program that promotes a culture of dialogue, pluralism, and mutual understanding human rights, including the rights of women and children, <coughs> and promoting the concept of non-violence, conflict resolution, and peace building, and human security. Focusing on principles and values of citizenship, com competence and integrity, national unity, and the rule of law, and transitional justice and democracy. With all this, we also here to mention we have tried as civil society organizations to find the appropriate mechanism to promote and to protect women's rights based on transparency, the rights to access of in to information and partnership in the formulation of public policy of the state, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. <coughs> It's our responsibility that lies on our work for the protection of victims and their rights as citizens guaranteed by the Constitution and international human rights conventions, in particular Resolution 1325 and CEDAW ratified by Iraq since years ago. Here also I would like you know, to ask the international community and you in particular how you can raise your support and solidarity with our struggle in these difficult days. I would like that to assure that we are asking that women, we are really everyday working, that women and women's groups should be given way into political dialogues and conversations that are fundamental to the future of peace and democracy and building in Iraq. By considering their role to strengthen good governance and development by improving transparency and accountability in all sections. We also assure to enhance the principle of citizenship and equality before law for all citizens without discrimination by reading the Constitution from all articles and items of sectarian natures, including Article 41, to avoid the, de the dedications of sectarianism, nurturing uh, terrorism and sectarian violence, planting hatred and dis dis disparity amongst the components of Iraqi society now in, in the long run. Creating a health atmosphere to empower women to achieve equality, providing them with equal opportunities in all fields, widening their participation in the decision making the place, making the places at different levels. Demanding to establish legal protection system, shelters, necessary health and social care <coughs> for vulnerable groups of women, including <coughs> victims of violence, and lobbying for a draft a law on domestic violence and the trafficking of women and children, alongside with enhancing rule of law, equality, and justice in Iraq. Also, in these days, we are working very hard for establishing the Human Rights Committee, 
commissions, which we feel it is one of the guarantees for you know, human rights in Iraq. And this is really, it needs a lot of support from the international community. And this is in the hand of the Iraqi parliament. We also call upon the international also to make their assistance and their support to women's groups and women's organizations, because as we always see that, I have to stress that women and young people in Iraq, they are the the potential elements for building peace and democracy in this country. As you can see from the Arab Spring, that the young people are in the forefront in fighting for change and against dictatorship in the region. Uh, we lost a number of our sisters, fighting sisters, but we didn't give up. And this is, we assure you. Iraqi women are determined to build up peace in their country and dignified life for themselves and their families, and bringing up gender justice <coughs> as the prerequisite to build democracy in Iraq. As I would like to conclude that we thank you and hope we can count on your continued solidarity.